Yeah, but I nice felt good to see you, bro. Yeah, Great, yeah, good the to legend. see you. Legend. Good to see you. How's it going? I'm okay, thanks. Yeah. Mate. Training hard. This yeah. is the gym where uh, I'd like to say the magic happens, but uh, yeah. not much of that happens in it. I think scousers, you very rarely. I have seen it on a couple of occasions, so it, it, it's, uh, it's wrong to say I've never seen a, a, a scouser quit. I have. Well, I've seen I've seen a couple of spirit over the years, uh, but on the whole, the ninety, the, the vast majority, the ninety nine percent of them, scouts are hard people. They, I just I just believe we're just we're different from others. That's my personal opinion. I mean, John will be, John comes from a very tough part of Liverpool. I'm from Wavertry, John's from Kirby. Uh, I was born in Toxted. Mm -hmm. I left when I was four. When you was four. Yeah. I was born in Toxted. I was born in Mulgrave, Mulgrave Square. Yeah, and uh, and uh, we moved down to Smithdown Road. Yeah. But you went to Kirby. Now that must have been tough in itself. Tough place to go because Kirby I've always known as as a tough place, but different. What I think of Liverpool is like because of the seaport. It's a big seaport, major seaport, and the history of all that. London, Glasgow, Newcastle, Belfast, and then obviously the New, uh, New York. All these great cities, you know. It's almost like if you can dream it, you can do it. You can do it. They inspire you to do that. As a child, I idolised John looked up to him, the, the greatest fighter our city's ever produced uh, by a country mile, in my opinion. No one can ever do what John done at the time that he done it. John could do everything. John could box. John could fight on the inside, mix it up, had a fantastic jab. It just he done the basics so, so well and stuck to the basics in, in the heat of battle and beat some fantastic names. You know, as Tony said, my jab, I, was, I had the benefits of being a boxer, a box fighter. You know, but that's why I believe a great boxer will beat a great fighter, eight out of ten. That's why I believe Muhammad Ali was the greatest. Why? Because a great boxer is a great fighter. You can't just hold the great fighters off just purely with boxing. You're going to stand toe to toe with them during the fight, stage. and you've got to battle with them, bang, bang, bang. And if they're still there, you can move. You've got more options. I feel you're a greater general. You've got more tools in the bag, you know. Why did you first walk into a boxing gym? Uh, my dad showed me a few moves, and then when I was getting there, after about six months, I remember catching him on the chin. He says, "Oh, you ready for the gym now?" And uh, I didn't want to tell him I was Good ready. Old to, days. I, I was ready three months earlier. But I was too scared <laughs> to hit him in the gym. Yeah. Who does the boxing work? It's all. Oh, Dave. Dave Caldwell, yeah. I have no input or no say so on what So the preparation, you're preparing yourself for the gym. Mm. It's not in the gym you're doing it. You're doing the science bit. I do the science bit away from the boxing gym. So yeah. all the, the, the strength and condition stuff is done away from the boxing gym. Everything boxing concerned wise is done here with Dave. Dave yeah. is in control of everything like that. What do the scientists say about the gym? Because <laughs> I've heard like, the, there's a reason some guys can take shots it better. Than so they say, but... According to the scientists, everyone has the same chin in the world, which I struggle to believe. 2.5 pounds of, of, of pressure will drop and hit on the right spot, and everyone's spot is different on everyone's chin. 2.5 pounds of square pressure on the, on the right part of anybody's chin, they automatically hit the floor. That's what scientists say, but I struggle to believe that. Yeah, because some guys don't do go down. Some guys don't. You hit them in a hammer and they don't go down. All I can't them quote them at the moment. Maybe <laughs> Oscar Bonavina yeah. was one of, of uh, later. Early. Oliver McCall. Uh, right. Uh, okay. Wayne McCulloch used to be one. There's been so many over the years, you know, but, but these guys do come to mind. Well, obviously, you've got a great chin. Uh, this is, and when you're training, do you think of things like that about if you did get knocked down, certainly coming back, responding when you're standing up, but if you did get knocked down, do you think about that? Well, I'm going to get up. Because I'm, I'm utilising this, like the treadmill, for example. Mm. You're running, the pushing it. You want to give in, but you're responding. Do you see that? Do you see like images like that, as if your opponent's pushing you, or you've have to, to get yourself off the floor? A response. I envision being knocked down. I didn't until it happened for the first time. And when I was properly knocked down the first time, and hurt. Uh, I think the first time I genuinely got hit and knocked down was against Oval McKenzie. He hit me so hard I went flat down on my face, and. Uh, it was only when I went home that night with you always saw your bodies aching all over. And I just thought, how did I get up from that? Because I was flat on my face on the floor. And it was down to the superior levels of fitness that I had. And once again, I go back to, it's just down to how hard you'll push yourself in the gym. Because no matter how hard it gets in the ring, it's never as hard as in here. And I've always found that throughout my career. I work as hard as I do in here. Because the harder I work in here, the easier it is when I get in that ring, and that's also that's the, always the goal. That's why I always continue. 
I'll never be a fighter who goes, I couldn't get up for that. I, I didn't train right for that. I'll never be that fighter because I always give it everything I've got every single day in the gym. Don't get me wrong. I come in the gym some days and I'm fed up and, and I'm tired and, and, I, and I just haven't got it in me. But I still give it everything I've actually got. It might not be much that day, but I've given it everything that I physically had in me. And every day I've always done that throughout my career. So I have no regrets when I look back and think, why, how, should I? And that's what this fight's about for me next one. It's, I'll have no regrets when I've finished. I'm, I'm very satisfied with what I've done. I've become a British, a Commonwealth, a European, a world champion like yourself, and, and I'm very satisfied with what I've done. I'm doing this now, last one, to chase. I'm just daring to be great, daring to do something that's truly amazing to do, and I'm going to fight for all these belts and all these things, but... I'm just trying to be the best I can possibly be, and that's what I'm doing in this fight. Most fights are won and lost on the training ground, oh, my yes, trainer used to say. Yeah. And for you to accept that, to, for us to accept it and to, in the gym and utilise that, to pretend the opponent's there, always imagine an opponent's going to be coming at you. It changed for me, training, definitely from light heavyweight to cruiserweight. Me, me training changed massively. A lot of it in my light heavyweight days was just street and road running. An awful lot of my career was spent on the road, hundreds and hundreds of miles, uh, and then you just you go over the over it. And I look back, it's just it, it's really good. And it's really it, it's it's like solitary. It's like solitary confinements when you're constantly on the road every morning, half five in the morning. And I look back at it, and it's it's a great attribute that I had was able to get up and do it every single day because it's, it's, it's only you v you and you will soon find out how much you do really want it when you have to do things like make weight, run every morning at half five and run, discipline yourself through diet and dedication. You do find out the kind of person you're on how much, how much do you really want it. You find them things out. They don't see what you've had to go through to get to that. If I didn't tally up with boxing, when I was walking around or talking during the day, I went in one ear and out the other. Because you know you're going to end up on the night the bell's going to go and the geezer's going to come out the corner and it's just you and him. So I was preparing for that. But that came from that decision when I was a senior. He said, hey, that's good, I wanted more of it because it's going to help me. And it's a bit like I go in the gym now, just a, just a general gym, not a boxing gym. And uh, last few years, and people talk about on the treadmill, they say, oh, I can't do more than five minutes or ten minutes on the treadmill. It's boring. You know, It's boredom just running and running and running. You know. And I, I smile, I think, well, yeah, well, it's boring for me, but I know what I'm doing with the boredom. The boredom's going to help me. I know why it's boring, you know, but it's within us. You're pushing yourself, you're pushing yourself. It's how you utilise it, how you're using it, Drives and what it you're on. using it for in your mind. A normal person would never understand. And, and uh, believe me, normal people don't fight for a living. You're something, you're wired differently. And I know it's, John, it's not for for a long time, and you come away from it, but it's always in you. It'll always be there. <laughs> you know, it'll never leave you. <laughs> I know it's never going to leave me. Uh, it's just like John said before, that laser-like focus and determination. You can't, <laughs> On the money. You can't, yeah. <laughs> laser-like. It was the same. You can't but get I... away from it. It never leaves you. And uh, I was just thinking about the hunger. You mentioned the hunger, though. Do you think that you have to be poor to be a boxer? No, I don't believe that. Uh, I, I, in, no, in, no word, in no stretch of the I wasn't poor growing up. Mm. We weren't poor. My mum had two jobs. My dad had two or three jobs at times. Uh, I, I, I don't think... How many children in the, your family? Me and three brothers. Uh, but my dad left when I was ten. Uh, my dad was incarcerated for the, for the period in jail. Uh, so he goes away. Mm. He comes home. You know, you've been a single parent family. My eldest brother moved away. My other elder brother went to university. So me and my little brother and my mum. And so times were tough, but that's not the reason I became a boxer. I can see exactly what John's point is, being poor did help. Yeah, it always drove me. I've always wanted the nice things in life, yes. But ultimately, that, that, can't, be the, that can't be the only thing that drives you because you at some point you will go, I've got it. Because I've been there now. I've got, I've, I've got all the things I could have dreamed of financially. I've done all right. I've done great. But so what continues to drive me then? The, the thought of being great is what continues. The thought of doing something special, leaving a legacy, that's what drives me. Well, I can just mention, this is, I mentioned you know, the poverty and the money and all that, yeah. But all the money in the world doesn't help you if you can't fight. You know, when the bell goes, mm. you're in there and alone. So it's more than the money. I agree with that. It's something you inside you. Yeah, it's something there. Ta you've got the ability to do the job you do, number one, within that, in boxing and the sport, in my case, with our case, the boxing. Uh, but there's that, yeah, there's something inside you. Because you were good athletes at school, John? Yeah, athletics, football. 
See, I was never a good athlete in school. I love playing football, but I was never a good. I was never a quick runner. Yeah. I was a defender, blocker. Okay, I can, I can strike a ball with two feet. It doesn't mean I'm very good at football, but I, I was all right at football. I always dreamed of playing for Everton, but truth be known, what position? Centre forward. Yeah. Oh, I just, striker. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I could, I could play a bit, but. I was never athletically gifted. That's why I always say to people, I am no better than you. You can do what, everything I can do. Just how much do you want it? How much sacrifice and dedication will you give it? And I'm a firm believer in that I'm not talented. I was driven to just do things. I was, I was always driven. That's the only way, the best, my greatest attribute is my determination. It always has been. It's the only thing I have. It's, it's the thing that separates me from the other normal people, just how much I'm willing to give to win. But give him this side to think about as well, because he's going to be, you know, yeah, yeah, just touching. That's what he yeah. does. Because he thinks he's, he's so covered up here from that left jab. You know, he thinks I've got, you know, he's got what the is greatest. Yeah. But if you, is. you're not thinking about just smacking no. his head, you, you give him something to think about here. So when I was a kid growing up, John Conti was the man. My name shouldn't be mentioned with John, so I have always said it. I just don't think so. Not for me to say. Other fighters will do it, and other fighters say, it. yeah, they do. But for me, no. Like, he'll always be an icon to me, so he'll always be a legend and I can never look at myself in that light. Like I said to you, John was an amazing boxer, a great athlete. It was, I'm a kid with just an unbelievable amount of determination and dedication and I've, I've believed and stayed on my dream and, and stuck by it. John, I, I shouldn't be mentioned with names like John's. What Tony's doing now is unifying the whole title. All the titles, all the belts. He's taking that challenge on. That's a great fighter, you know? You're not even at your peak. Really? You know, I'm getting old, you've, John. You, yeah, but you've got stronger and stronger and stronger. You have, you've had no problems externally outside the ring. That's going to affect your body. You, you're like these great fighters who do it all in, like Muhammad Ali and all that. They want to be in the gym. They want to be trained. They want to be in the ring. They're doing it for a reason as well to get into the ring. That's what you've done. And the, fi the, the fights have shown that. And that you, you want to do your business. You want to live in the ring, as you mentioned, the legacy of that, which is basically you want to fight and prepare yourself properly, which you have done. Uh, to, uh, to, uh, to be in the ring, I don't think you're. Um, I think you're at your prime, if not even greater. But by winning this fight, you'll be even greater. You know. Seems cruel. this telling the man he's in his prime when he's <laughs> 12 days away from retiring. Ah, oh, mate, it's it's been a long road, and I'm happy that we're coming towards the end. Uh, I'm facing the most formidable opponent in my career. You know what he's done in 15 fights is truly amazing. This guy has won every single thing he can possibly win in the world of not just professional boxing, but in amateur boxing. He's won every single thing he was possibly could ever win. Uh, but as John touched on before, it's 15 fights. And who's going to pose him the problems that I'm going to pose him on the night? Because I'm going to do things that's never been done to him before. And he's going to encounter just different things. And regardless of if he's a better boxer than me or whatever, everyone, we have our own attributes and it's how we see fit to use them on the night. But there's one thing that I have that that he doesn't have, and that's that punch that can just switch out lights. That just 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 takes one split second. And as a boxer, I've said this before. I'll say it again. I don't. We don't deal or work in seconds. We deal in hundredths of a second. And if you make the wrong move at the wrong time, just a hundredth of a second, step to your left, step to your right at the wrong time, you just wake up and it's over. And I have the capability to do that, and I've shown that since I was. 15 years old I've been doing it I'm going to show it again on November the 10th I just believe deep down in my soul I'll find a way uh, as good as he is as great as he is I just believe November the 10th I'm destined to do something to do something fantastic What do you think he'll miss from fighting that he maybe hasn't thought about? The challenge overcoming the challenges um, he obviously will miss that it's normal and natural but also there's a challenge of, uh, of uh, getting out at the right time Mm. And making that decision, that's a good decision, you know, for your family, your money, you've sustained, you've got your, you've got your targets, your finance, your, your legacy, your championships, you've done all that. Um, and to, to make the decision to get out at the right time, a lot of fighters don't do it, you know, to get the wrong time. And uh, it's a, then that's a tough decision, because mm. your whole being is, no, I want to be in there to prove I'm the greatest, I'm, uh, that I can take these guys on and beat them and all that. And there's a time, that's the challenge, that, when that becomes the challenge, say, to let go and move out. And move out. I've given this sport everything I've possibly got in me for 20 years. I've put it first my whole life. It's, it's never played second fiddle to nothing. Even me own children have played second fiddle. Playing second fiddle, you mm. know. 
Oh, yeah, but it was for the sake of the orchestra. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you can never stop with the punts. It was a good one, though. You did, you did say punt, didn't you? Who <laughs> was the better actor? Did you act, John? Was you in a movie? Yeah, yeah, I've done a lot. 1972, I had a card. I was in a movie called Man at the Top. Okay. With uh, the Kenneth Haig. I'll have to watch that. Uh, and uh, Joe Lampton. And Enjoy it. Yeah, yeah um, Lawrence Harvey originally was uh, Joe Lampton. Man at the Top. Yeah, I loved it. But I, and then I was in um, Willie Russell's musical Blood Brothers. Okay. Oh, well, you said I didn't know that. You learn something every day. Didn't and later. John will be better than me. <laughs> No matter what John does, he's going to be better than me. So it doesn't matter. No matter what it is. No matter what it is.